Good evening. Um, I want to greet you in the precious name of Jesus. And this evening we have the privilege again of just enjoying God's Word together. And um, we've had a lot of time to think, haven't we? We've had a lot of time to meditate and search our hearts before God and endeavor to discern what God is saying to us um, as a church, as an individual. And um, you know, as, I, as I look at the circumstances, um, I think the fears are mounting in people's minds and hearts. We've heard of many that um, salaries have been cut, many who've um, maybe even lost their jobs, not sure where the next cent is going to come from and um and so on and um you know we, we're facing hard times but i really believe that god doesn't want us to lose focus um truly he doesn't want us to focus on that which is happening around us and i'm not saying that that which is happening around us is difficult is easy i believe it's very challenging but he doesn't want us to forget why we are here and what he's called us for i believe he wants us to see <clears throat> that we are presented with amazing opportunities as many have said and and we've begin to experience um many people soft towards god those who would before wouldn't listen but now are getting ready to listen because they're feeling the pressure of life this is where us as believers like never before we pray for opportunities as believers to reach the lost. Folk, I really believe that we, we are presented with opportunities and we need to be prepared. And, and I want to pray for us just before we start tonight after that little introduction. Dear Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you take every word that is spoken tonight, Lord. And, and Lord, that you just give us a fresh revelation of your word and you quicken it to our hearts. You know, eat it, the word for now, live enough. For ons sal maak. En jyre, daar waar ons nou miskien gechallenges dier die woord, help ons om nie weg te, geloop, te loop nie, of maar help ons om in, 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 in geloof te sê, jyre, ons wil luister, ons wil verander, ons wil doen wat jy wil hee, ons moet doen. In Jesus in naam. Amen. En so nou, um, we presented with this challenge, and I just want to pre pre uh, present a few thoughts, a paar gedagtes. Want dit laas week, um, laas, uh, was het gister, of, uh, ek het nou vergeet wat die dag dit was, het ons gepraat, en ons het uh, verwees na die vers, um, in Lukas hoofdstuk 3, wat vir ons sê, dat as ons die doping van die Heilige Gees, kry, um, dan is die Heilige Gees in ons, soos a, onuitblisselijke vier en um, hier onuitblisselijke vier um, is daar om, om, om rarig die kinderachtige idees en die kinderachtige gemeneniere van een christen om weg te brand it's there to burn away the childish ways and introduce us into this um, life in the spirit um, this powerful life in the spirit that's what it's, that's what it's there for the initial experience of the baptism in the Holy Ghost is beautiful. It's amazing. Um, it's out of this world. Anyone who's, who've experienced it will agree with me. Um, beautiful. I thank God. And, and, and folks, as I've said before, I, I, really, I really pray that the church would, would just enjoy a greater liberty in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and that <clears throat> we as a church would find ourselves in a freedom operating in these gifts may they be abundant in our midst for one reason because it's these gifts by which god empowers the church and gives our message a clout that 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 the world needs to hear in other words um the boodskap the boodskap van die evangelie as dit word verkondig word deur mense wat gedoop is in die heilige gees dan word het krachtig en dan kan die wo woord dit doen wat God wil hee uh, dit moet doen en so um, the beginning experience is amazing chapter 4 
Hoofdstuk 4 van Lucas. Ik um, wil net twee versies voor ons, versies voor ons lezen en hierom uh, begin praten. Dus wanneer je read two verses, the first verse of chapter 4 says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led um, in the Spirit in the wilderness. Um, during 40 days being tempted of the devil and then if we go down and we read from uh, verse 14 which we read I think yesterday and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all and um, I just I don't know you know I, I just noticed the difference here Jesus returned from the baptism, his baptism, from a step of obedience. Now we know that the Bible says to us in the book of John, If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus said, and I will pray the Father and he will send you the Holy Ghost. Seems as if that the baptism in the Holy Ghost, the dropping the Heilige Geest, is only for you what... Uh, Wat in haar harte al besluit het, hulle gaan gehoorzaam wees aan God. We're going to be be uh, obedient believers. It seems that the prerequisite to enjoy the fullness of the Holy Ghost is most definitely obedience. <coughs> and so Jesus re returns from the baptism in water and, and, and this of course is an act of obedience. And the Bible says he returned full of the Holy Ghost. And he then is tempted for 40, he goes into the wilderness and he fasts for 40 days. Um, and then he is, te uh, and afterwards he is tempted of the devil. And once he now is able to overcome or withstand the temptations of the devil, there's, there's a kind of victory that is won. And Jesus returned, he's not now only full of the Holy Ghost, he's now returns in the power of the Spirit. Now guys, I want to suggest this to you and I really believe it to be the truth. I believe it to be a, a spiritual principle. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Um, but that's but the beginning. God then needs to put us through tests and trials so that we might prove our decision. In fact, it's, it's in a time of trial that God proves our decision. The Bible says that in the book of Peter. The trial of your faith being more precious than that of gold that perisheth. Um, and, and so God now tries us, puts us through fiery trials. And it's at this time when we're able to come out, if, if, we're, able to, if we're able to be sensitive to what God's doing in our lives, we're able to come not, out, not only baptized or full of the Holy Ghost, but we might return in the power of the Spirit to be used of God. In fact, many, many people are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Many speak in tongues. Many might even prophesy. But I want to say this to you, folks. There are few, there are few that, that actually operate in the power of the Spirit. In fact, my heart goes out this morning and this evening, and I, I'm, 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 it's, it's a prayer for my heart. I'm not preaching at you. I'm sharing with you as a brother. Um, die Heere wil hee, ons moet in die kracht van die Heilige Gees omdien. Ons moet gedoop wees in die Heilige Gees. Ons moet toelaat dat die Heere ons syber, en dit gaan gebeur dier moeilike tye van verskillende um, areas af en verskillende um, ervaringe sal ons dan getoets wees en gesyber wees Ek dink die mooie Afrikaanse woord is, die Heere wil ons louter. Um, hy, wil, hy wil al die, 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 die uh, he wants to remove all the impurities that the gold might remain. In fact, I want to suggest this to you, that um, if, we, if we do not, if we do not allow God to purify us, we'll never enjoy operating in the power of the Spirit. Now, I, I enjoyed this, this whole uh, story again and you know what was quite interesting to me is that the moment Jesus was full or baptized with the Holy Ghost he 
he came from Jordan and immediately he was uh, the Lord Jesus led him into the Father Father led Jesus into the wilderness or the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and I want to say this guys those who are serious those who are baptized with the Holy Ghost will get the undivided attention of the devil you see God the devil has no problem if you're a lukewarm believer if you're an inactive believer I don't know how those two come together please excuse me I don't think they can coexist but somehow sometimes we find ourselves in that lukewarmness or that inactivity and but the moment a man or a woman stands up and says I'm going to be I'm going to do what God wants I'm going I'm going to endeavor to live in the fullness of the Holy Ghost and operate in the power of the Spirit you will have the undivided attention of the devil and I wonder how many of us are sitting here tonight. I wonder how many of us are listening during this time of, of coronavirus and, and here we are so unsure. I wonder how many of us have had thoughts, thoughts, even depression, you know. Guys, depression is not of God. Depression is not God's will for our lives. You know, God has not, I always say, God has not called us to survive. He's called us to thrive. And thriving is not circumstance dependent. We've taught that over and over. We read the Bible. Those who thrive, folk, their thriving was not dependent upon their circumstances. There's many examples. But yet Jesus, or the, uh, the devil, the, Jesus now receives the devil's undivided attention. And he's led away into the wilderness. He fasts. Um, he, he fasts for 40 days. And right at the end, when he's at his weakest, weakness, it seems that the devil appears now to tempt him. To tempt the Son of God. In fact, I want to tell us today, I want you to listen carefully to me, and I'm sharing with you from my heart. What is the word in Afrikaans to say for ons? Vierig daal lang die die duivel versoek is. Ons gaan versoeken he, die duivel gaan ons versoek Die Heere gaan het toelaat. Want hy is bezig om ons te reinig. In fact, um, God is going to take us through trials that our decision may be proved and our relationship with Him may be proved and we might come out as pure vessels that we might operate in the power of the Spirit. Now, these three temptations are well known to us. They're also recorded for us in the book of Matthew chapter. In Matthew chapter... Um, 4 and Luke chapter 4 and I also think in the book of Mark I enjoyed this one here in the book of Luke um, and yeah Jesus was tempted and it's interesting that the, the devil comes and tempts the Lord Jesus in three ways and I'm telling you folks we tempted in three ways we received Jesus at the beginning it, it's a honeymoon period we baptized in water we baptized in the Holy Ghost everything is bliss everything is going well um, and then it comes time for God in our test how serious we are about our relationship begin to purify us so that we also may then become these effective believers now I don't know what's in your heart I don't know how long if you're really longing for that effectivity in fact I'm challenged I tell you what there's an urgency in my heart today I listened to our brother Scott Wheeler preach on hell and I tell you what, I, I've come to the conclusion that hell is real and I need to warn my neighbors about hell no matter what cost. And I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I need to operate in the power of the Spirit that it might be effective. My own words are not going to be able to, con are going to, uh, to, um, to persuade them. And yet Jesus was tempted. Can, and I just wanted to draw three principles out of these three temptations, which I believe are effective or or have a bearing on us today quite interesting you see when we now born again baptized filled with the holy ghost we we have new life and um you know the flesh the flesh always wants to know what's in it for him that's what the flesh is about i'm pretty sure you've experienced i don't have to tell you how weak the flesh is and how easily the flesh now, easily the, the flesh gives in, but the flesh always wants to know what's in it for me. And I'll tell you what, folk, there's something that needs to be taken out of our lives, is that this whole thing of what's in it for me, 
What am I going to get out of serving Jesus? And, and, and you know, yes, for sure, we're going to get heaven. Amen. We're going to know God's protection. Amen. We are going to enjoy the fullness of an experience with God where we get to know Jesus and know God and know the things of the heaven. God is going to clean our lives up. Our marriages are going to be effective if we listen to Him. Our children are going to be effective. Our finances are going to be effective. God is going to clean up our act. But you see, the flesh is a sneaky, sneaky fella. And He wants to know what's in it for Him. And that's where the temptations come. It's quite interesting here that um, I read to us very, very quickly. It says here, and the devil said unto Jesus in verse uh, chapter 4, verse 3, If you be the Son of God, command these stones that they be made bread. Interesting. Bread. In fact, you know what bread is? Very simply, if you look at what a man eats generally, you can then determine his wealth. That's how it is. To a point. Poor people eat less expensive food. Wealthier people are more extravagant. It speaks about an extravagant lifestyle. And every one of us would love free bread, wouldn't we? We'd love everything just to be so comfortable. And uh, we, 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 I'm, speaking, I'm speaking physically. We'd like to live without financial pressure. Not so. We'd like to live without health issues. We just want bread bread abundant bread in this life i don't think it's changed jesus was tempted by that and you see we can take the gospel we can take this life because the gifts of the holy ghost the life in christ has many promises but there's those verses that says you can ask anything in my name and i'll give it to you and clearly of course that has to be qualified we need to ask according to the will of the father but many people misinterpret that and, and endeavor to take the scriptures and to apply it so that they now ask God for material things so they might be full of bread. And Jesus turned to him simply and he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God that proceeds out of the mouth of, uh, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And and this evening, folk, the first thing God wants to do in our lives is he wants to take out that notion that believers are going to live, all believers are going to live a comfortable lifestyle with no troubles. You see, we are not exempt. We're living in a, a corrupt world. But God says, the beauty of living in a corrupt world, I'm going to give you victory in the corrupt world. And what I want you to do is I want you to focus on my word and what the word teaches and what not what you think to be correct. You know, folks, I, I, I don't want to belabor this. I don't want to spend hours on this. But many people interpret physical blessing uh, or, or, or physical well-being as the spiritual blessing of God. And that's not true. Not, it, it need not be. We thank God for His physical provisions. Amen. But true blessings are spiritual blessings. Blessings that make me a person that is able to share the gospel with people efficiently. Makes me a person that God is able to press on my button when there are people that need to hear of the gospel. And so today, I believe what God wants to do is He wants to rid us of this idea. He wants to rid us of this idea. And, and I think this whole experience with coronavirus is pushing that button. You see, God is saying, you might not have all the bread you have. And so now, how are you going to serve me then? How are you going to serve me then? Folk, I've always maintained that hardness is not bad for the church, it's good for the church. Hardness will bring out the true believers. Hardness will, will manifest what is in our hearts. And I'm really, really praying, God, folk, that we, we take this opportunity um, to, to allow God to work with us. And so we cannot use the gospel to satisfy or gratify the flesh. It is yet to glorify God that His Word might be declared with power and that you might operate in the power of the Spirit as you are a witness till Jesus comes. Pretty accurate, isn't it? The next thing, Jesus takes him onto a mountain and, and shows him the kingdom of the world. And the devil says to him in verse 6, All this power I will give you and, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. 
and to whomsoever I will give it, if thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now, folk, the next trial that comes into our lives, the next challenge is compromise. You see, if Jesus had compromised, all he had to do is fall down and worship. Now, we wouldn't understand why he'd want to do that, but I tell you, the flesh is forever wanting to compromise. Always wanting to take a shortcut. You see, to strike a deal. That's what the devil wanted. In fact, I'm very concerned in the days that we're living in. We, we cannot live compromising lives. The temptation is no different. We're always called to compromise. We're called to compromise in our trust in God. We're called out to compromise. The devil tempts us. Um, as to our value systems. Is God really first in your life? What are we really worshipping? What really comes first? But you know what? I've been very challenged this 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 lockdown as to who I'm trusting. You know, when we see the things um, uh, uh, coming apart around us, it's almost like it's one of our gonna miskine weet tot dis ver kom ons allemaal brood koop en paar chops en bykie braai en so en so voorts, maar wat gaan in toekomst gebeur? I tell you, when that be, becomes a concern, a worry, I wonder, folk, if we're not compromising our faith or our belief. But the Lord Jesus was called to compromise. We also today called to compromise the word. Folk, I want to tell you, I've wondered recently how many truly committed believers there are, and I don't want to put you in condemnation. As you know, by the grace of God, we preach to many, many people on a, on a weekly basis. And so many people that I meet, I, I wonder if they really, really want to serve Jesus. They sound interested in the beginning, but eventually after a while they begin to realize, but hang on, now God calls me to a commitment. Sometimes I get the feeling that they'd, they'd rather just go back to their compromising lifestyle. And you see, folk, we cannot compromise what God's Word teaches us and tells us. And if we want to live in the power of the Spirit, we have to be uncompromising in the truth of God's Word. And this whole subject of the Holy Spirit has been compromised. Um, and so, may we be those who do not compromise. Because the Lord Jesus said to the devil, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shall thou serve. Folk, may we be those that are serving only Jesus with all of our hearts. The next thing that he uh, happened is um, he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle in the, of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from thence. It is written, The angels shall give charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they will bear thee up, lest at any time thou should dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto them, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. In fact, you know the next the next temptation, um, we, we tempted in that we, we kind of want to live in the power of the Spirit because we enjoy the kind of fanatical side of the Holy Spirit or people have become fanatical and we almost, we almost want to see miracles just for the sake of seeing miracles. You know, we long for those, I always call them goosebump experiences. We go from goosebump to goosebump experience. You know, as, as a youngster, as a teenager, I had a problem. I used to go from camp to camp experience. I wonder how many of us, as, 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 as adults, are going from camp to camp experience. Um, kind of just living on that goosebump, that emotional high. You know, this is a serious problem that they were living in. Many people have, have taken this this whole experience of the Holy Spirit and and it's, it's in many places it's become mass hysteria. People go for an experience. It's not really edifying. Um, something happens, they can't explain it. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's wanting to use the Holy Spirit for, for a high. Folk, that's not what God calls us to. In these days we have many people that that even sometimes, it's, to me, it sounds a bit like fortune telling. They want prophecies over their lives. And folk, um, 
You know, when you read the scriptures, we don't read the apostles prophesied over people's lives. But it's almost as if we're not satisfied with living by faith and trusting God, but we want something else. And so, and so they enter a realm of wanting to be fanatics or the fanatical side and, and uh, not, not happy to live by faith in what God says. And so once again, the flesh wants an experience. Uh, the flesh wants a feeling. Now, folk, I believe when you serve Jesus over there is a feeling. But folk, the feeling is a result of love. I don't live by feelings. I live by faith. And yes, I find myself weeping in God's presence regularly. I find my heart stirred. There are moments when I, I feel like I want to be beside myself. But folk, that's not why... I, that's not the purpose of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. That's not the purpose of serving Jesus. And you know, folk, um, it can also lead to a lot of disillusionment. Because God is not going to answer our question just for a goosebump experience or a feeling experience. In fact, He's going to say, You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. What I've said, I've said. And let God be true and every man a liar. It's time for you to take me my promises. Time for you to take me my promises. Folk, you know, the, 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 um, sometimes we, we love being, in, I think most times, we love being in control. And, and so we want God to bless us with His, with his miracles so that we might feel that we're in control. But that's not why it's there. You see, God has promised. God is God. He is our God. He said He will never leave us, forsake us. All the promises in God's Word are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. They are yours. God says, now rise in faith and serve me in faith. And yes, there will be emotion. Yes, there will be love. But we don't, we don't look for these signs because of a, really a heart of unbelief. We're living by faith. We are not fanatics. We don't want to be, in that sense, fanatical and just looking for the apparent supernatural rather than just going along and serving Jesus. And he will manifest himself through these gifts as and when it is necessary. And, um, and so there's lots more, but I see our time has, has marched on. And um, it says this, And once Jesus had worked through these, these temptations, he arrived, his faith was tested, his decision was tested. He, 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 he had passed the test. And God could now allow him to operate in the power of the Spirit. And he could begin to open doors. The Bible says to us, um, uh, they went out of fame of him throughout all the region round about, and he taught in their synagogues and glory, and being glorified or loved by all. In fact, you know what, folks? When we become resolved, we've settled these matters in our hearts. You know what you can expect? You can expect to be an effective witness for Jesus. You can expect to be loved of all. You can expect doors to begin to open. As you've allowed God to cement these three little temptations or thoughts in your heart and that you might rise in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know what this has meant for you. I know what it's done for me in the last couple of days. But folk, there's such a resolve in my heart to really serve Jesus in the power of the Spirit. There are many that need Jesus. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And so I ask you, to consider these thoughts that I've shared with you. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister them to you. And uh, we look forward to just enjoying great blessings as soon as we allow out of the confines of our homes and able to go into the world again to speak to those who need Jesus. And so I'm going to pray for us. Dear Lord Jesus, here it's going to eat you in the name of Jesus. And I will bid for each of you om hierdie drie punte, hierdie drie um, temptations, Heere, wat ons het in ons levens. Help ons om een goeie besluit te na maak vir, vanavond om u te dien. Help ons om vastbesloot te wees. Om nie die vlees te laat opstaan nie. Maar die gees, um, die, die boorpositie te gee, die gees, um, help ons om om te laat in ons levens te laat Jezus hier en help ons dan soos ons daar in die wereld uitgaan dat mense mag sien 
ons in die kracht van die geest deel en leven dat jyre hulle die dieren vir ons sal opgaan om evangelie met mense te deel Lord I pray for those who might be struggling and, and might need to get a grip with things in their lives I pray in Jesus name for miracles thank you Jesus Amen thank you for your time God bless you and I look forward to seeing you in person I'm missing you all terribly and we all are missing you and see you then